welcome back welcome back guys now i plan to get all of activity three out today as in monday so hopefully this is going to be useful to you guys let me just get through this quickly so the in introduction for activity three there is no template let me bring my pen up there is no template for activity three so you have to create this document yourself they do give you pointers to use in the report for activity three and i'm going to go through and explain as much as i can uh, one second there we go activity three an assessment of the appropriateness of your protection measures so these three things here these are the things they tell you on the exam paper so they don't give you a template but they do tell you essentially what to speak about so an assessment of the appropriateness for your of your protection measures a consideration of alternative protection measures that could be used a rationale for choosing your protection measure over the alternatives uh, these were copied directly from the exam paper so i did not come up with these this is not my interpretation this is what was said on the actual exam paper for each of the previous fixes or protection measures in activity two so that's the assessment activity you will need to do these three things you need to think about the appropriateness so how appropriate is what you've said going to be is it is it even going to work how is it going to work why is it going to work the alternatives what could have been done instead so instead of installing antivirus on every single pc what could we have done instead uh, the rationale for the choice why was this choice the choice that you made the protection measure that you chose why was that one better than the alternative so let's say for argument's sake we have one two three alternatives right why was number one better than number two and three that's what we need to do so activity three how to do very technical language medium technical language low technical language or for a dumb dumb like me right that one was just me being silly obviously but this is how you should think about doing activity three now there is uh are there there is reason to do each one but it's purely dependent upon the scenario that you're given and i'll go through and explain so how to do like with everything else it depends there's no way we can just look at activity three without reading anything don't not knowing anything and say you know what i'm going to use medium technical language no you might have to use not when i say very it just means more technical than medium so me, medium is like the average it person like myself or slightly above that knows some stuff and low is maybe someone that doesn't know anything the report will most likely be for the person in the brief. So in this instance, I'm speaking to, I think it's Baljinder Singh. You might be speaking to Mary Brown. I might be speaking to Ade Brown. I don't know. It doesn't matter who. Whoever you met with in scenario um, A, in part A, that's most likely who the report is going to be for. So tailor your report to suit that person. Now, Baljinder Singh was said to be someone who is an experience it user but not an it specialist not a network specialist so for baljinder i maybe would not use low you could use low to be fair i wouldn't use low i would most likely use medium for baljinder uh, let me keep going tailoring the language again if the person is an accountant okay yeah so here i give a few examples so i say if the person is an accountant who simply wants this stuff done maybe use low level language um, if the person is an experienced IT practitioner, but not a network specialist in this case, or not a security specialist, maybe use medium level language. If the person is a network specialist uh, who maybe simply needed some help because he or she is understaffed, maybe use high level language. So this is how I would more or less decide what type of language to use. So high level language, they are very much a network person or a network specialist or a security specialist. So they will understand all the words and phrases you throw at them. You use all the technical terms you learned. Simply just throw everything. Just say firewall. Just say ACL. Just, just say server. No need to describe what these things are. For example, I have a few examples here. We will need a firewall and an ACL set up to limit access to sensitive areas. They will know exactly what this means. You don't need to explain anything. They'll be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool. Let's move on. That's what they might say. And for medium level language, let's say the person knows some IT. They can grasp some of the words and terms or phrases used. Making things simpler would be helpful. And this is the example I gave again. This is like a reworking of the previous one. We will need a firewall and uh, create a list of users who can access certain resources to limit access to sensitive areas. These two phrases, so this one, well, these two sentences, that one there for high level and this one here for uh, medium level, they're saying exactly the same thing more or less. Now, I might have made a few English mistakes here, but that's fine. 
they're saying more or less exactly the same thing, but just saying it in a way which the medium level person can understand a bit more. Because an ACL, if if I simply say ACL to someone who doesn't know what a server is, who doesn't know what access control is, start, it's going to mean nothing to them. They're going to be like, what does this acronym actually mean? Whereas a high level person who's a network person, who's an IT person, who's a network specialist, they'll be like, oh yeah, ACL, of course, I know that, that's fine. And for low level language, I would say this person knows very little about IT. They will most likely understand nothing you say. So all of those acronyms and terms and stuff you throw at them, they might not understand it. They might have seen the words in some places. For example, the word server comes up a lot on our phones when we have to update stuff on our tablets, laptops, PCs, consoles. So someone might have a basic understanding of what a server is, but not enough for them to read a, re a technical report and understand what needs to be done. So I would say keep the language very simple and explain what everything means. Uh, this is the example I gave here again. We will need a firewall and I would explain what a firewall is. A firewall is a stateful machine or a stateful computer or a stateful processor that monitors incoming and outgoing traffic and tries to limit access to resources that shouldn't be accessed, more or less, right? And an ACL and access control list is simply a list of names or usernames um, put into a database or a system or a spreadsheet or, an, or, or a text file which can access certain resources. So as a general teacher in a school, I might not, I will not be able to access accounting information. As a cleaner, I mean, I should not be able to access um, students' inf information. But as a teacher, I can access students' inf information, maybe parents' information as well. The principal in my school, or or the or the um, the IT person at the very 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 top, they can access every single thing they want because they run the entire system essentially, more or less. Again, um, set up to limit access to sensitive areas. Explain what sensitive areas are. And in most cases, sensitive areas anywhere where people's details are going to be. If it's just going to be the name of the school, the school's bank account number and sort code, that, that doesn't actually do anything. But if it's going to be the name of the school, the person, the, um, the, the accountant at the school, the accountant's address, the bank details, the login details for the bank account, whatever it is. So sensitive areas, you can decide what that is. And this is how I would do it for a low level person. Leave nothing to the imagination. Leave nothing ambiguous. Make it so simple that this person understanding the English language and how to read and how to write is enough for them to understand what's in the report. Let me say that one more time. Make the low level language so simple for a non-IT person, for a non-experienced person, let's say an accountant or an English teacher, make it so simple that all they have to do to understand this report is be able to read standard English, right? Because I say we need a firewall, explain that, and an ACL, explain that set up to limit access to sensitive areas, explain that as well. Uh, tailoring the language, simply put, use words and phrases that you think will allow that person to understand, that specific person in the report. And in my case, I believe this was a 2018 paper, don't quote me on that, um, 2018 or 2019 paper, and I think the guy's name was Baljinder Singh again, he's an experienced IT user, but he's not a specialist. So for Baljinda, I would probably go medium level language, as I've said before, because he understands some IT. Okay, please note again, use the protection measures from activity two. So this is activity three, use the protection measures directly from activity two. You don't need to create new ones, use those. Now I'm going to go through defining or explaining the three things that you have to do. So where it says appropriateness, an assessment of the appropriateness of your protection measures. What does that mean? Why is this solution appropriate or suitable for the scenario given? So why is it good and why do you think it would work? So for example, the appropriateness, I'm going to say I'm going to make sure that the data on the server is encrypted because they didn't state that it was or was not encrypted. I'm going to make sure it is encrypted. Um, why is that appropriate? If it's not encrypted, so say what would happen potentially if it's not encrypted, why is this good? Let's say someone managed to get access to our system, whether it be someone who is internal, so someone who works for the company, or someone who is external, someone who just came from outside, a hacker, an attacker, whatever. Let's say they gained access to the server somehow. They gained access to every single file on the server. If the server is not encrypted, meaning the stuff is not jumbled, it's easily readable. This document here is not encrypted. I can send this document to any single person on the internet and they'll be able to read the entire PowerPoint, right? That's not encrypted. If I encrypt it and I send it and I do not send you the key, you might be able to open a document, but you'll see jumbled characters and you will not be able to make out anything at all. That's what the encryption does. It jumbles the characters. It makes it unreadable. 
So even if the internal or external person gets access to, let's say, um, the password file, right? They will not be able to read a single thing in that file. So that's the purpose of encryption. Why is it good? Why do you think this would work? This would work because encryption is known to do that. It's known to keep data from being readable. Um, alternative protection measures, a consideration of alternative protection measures that could be used. I would say no more than about two or three alternative measures. You don't really want to um, overcome by yourself with so many points. These are other ways in which the problem could be solved. Let's say I don't have, what did I say before, a encryption on the server, right? What I could do instead is have very, very limited access to the server and maybe use an access control list. That's number one. And what I would do um, every time someone has to log into the server to get information, to save information there, to do anything, they would have to use their username and password to log in, right? And they might have to sign a waiver every time so click yes to confirm that you are this user with this password and that whatever changes you're going to make is going to be um changes that are within the agreement policy whatever the case is every time they log in they do that and there's also going to be a log of what they do so not logging in but a log if you did activity not activity one if you did unit one you might know a logging system is so a log is simply a trail of everything you do. So there might be a log on my PC telling me that I clicked on the pen, I went up to pen, I clicked on um, highlighter, I changed the color from yellow to something else. That would be a log. It simply tracks every single thing I do, everything I type, everything I click, every time I rename a file, every time I open a file, every time I copy a file, it will have a log. That's an alternative. So you're going to sit there and think about alternatives for the thing that you found. So if you think putting encryption on the server is the best way, which in my opinion it is, that's going to be your number one thing to speak about. That's going to be the choice you've made. Alternatives could have been, I could have put an ACL on there. I could have made sure that um, to access the server, every single time you want to access the server, you have to go to IT and they'll have to physically patch you in. And that's going to be very long-winded and not work very well, but that's fine. It's an alternative that is a workable solution, but very inconvenient. So that's what alternative means, obviously, um, to give you other means or other ways of doing the thing that you're trying to do, to coming to the same, not answer, but the same solution in terms of it's protected in some way. And let me go to my next PowerPoint. And the rationale for the choice, a rationale for choosing your protection measures over the alternatives. So compared to the alternatives, why was the option you chose better in your estimation? I think... Um, encrypting the server would be much better than going to IT every single time you need to copy and paste or move or rename or make use of a file because number one is going to be very cumbersome to do that every time. If I need to access 20 files on a server five, ten times a day, I'm going to have to go to IT every time. That's not a very, it's a workable solution in a super secure environment, but it's not a very practical solution. Encrypting the information means that anyone who gains access to the server, whether internal or external, if they do not have access to the decryption key, which only a few people should have, it should be installed on the systems at work, obviously. If they do not have access to the decryption key, then the data is completely useless to them. As I've mentioned before, sometimes it might take hundreds of years or potentially thousands of years to break encryption with current processing power that we have, which means that it's going to be useful to no one currently. So simply explain in detail why your choice, why your protection measure that you've chosen is better than the alternatives that you said that you mentioned earlier. That's it. And so, for example, I have here uh, protection measure one, protection measure two, and protection measure three. And all I've said with each of these is with appropriate language. That's the main thing, right? Because with appropriate language tells us or tells the person reading that this should be at your level. And again, Baljinder Singh, I would say, so we had low, we had medium, and I, said, I think I said high. And I would say Baljinder was about a medium. Um, let's say I had a random accountant who has some money to start up a company but knows absolutely nothing about IT other than maybe turning on the computer and accountants make use of Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet programs quite a lot. I would say that person should be given low level um, language simply because they don't know anything about IT. Let's say uh, you're now working for an IT firm. And the person that you're meeting with is an IT specialist, is a network specialist. And the reason that you've come in, you've been hired as a, like a freelance agent, right? They don't have enough staff. 
few, uh, a few people left the con um, the company a week ago and they need staff to help them quickly I would maybe use high level language for that person if they're a network person because they know exactly what you know but they don't have the time to do all the work themselves so again Baljinda would be medium uh, accountant would be low because they don't know much IT and the IT professional IT expert person would be high read the scenario carefully and make sure you can pick out what level this person is at and simply take it from there and again protection measure one you have to do all three of these points so the um the appropriateness the alternatives and the rationale for for protection measure one for protection measure two same thing again appropriateness uh, alternatives and rationale this is for protection measure two and for protection measure three same thing again appropriateness alternatives and rationale and again all with the appropriate language that's it for, act uh, for activity three introduction. So hopefully that was useful. The next thing I'm going to do is a jump into a Word document and try and fill it in as quickly as I can and then go over and explain that as well.